Hello and welcome to this AE Basics tutorial. In the last tutorial I told you about the option to be able to go to Composition Pre-Render. Now in CS6 there has been some subtle changes which are very powerful and make the need for pre-rendering far less and they are called the Global Performance Cache and the Persistent Disk Cache. The idea behind them is this, once you have put something into RAM After Effects is going to remember that even if you kind of go away and you come back again and you change things and then you change them back After Effects is going to remember whatever you have put into RAM as long as you have enabled disk caching so I've got the background that we were showing in the last tutorial here which isn't cached at all at the moment and clearly we're going to want to cache it at some stage and I've got the original composition and you can't see the layers so let me unshy them so here are the layers with the bouncing text Okay, so we've, we've got the bouncing text in one comp and we've got the background in another one. Now let's just say I want to carry on working in the original composition, moving my markers around, letting it a bit more smooth, whereas I want the background to actually be rendering into a cached, a disk cached item so that it can come in and play without me having to pre-render. How does that work? Well, firstly, you just need to double check that your disk caching is enabled and that's done through your preferences Obviously, in a Mac, it's After Effects Preferences. In a PC, it's Edit Preferences. And you'll see that there is actually something called Media and Disk Cache. Go into Media and Disk Cache and just make sure that Enable Disk Caching is on, that you've got plenty of size to be able to do it, and that you've specified a folder. Now, the faster the disk drive, the quicker caching will take place. Because you are going to take this file and kind of do a, a, a render, if you like, and then save that render onto a disk, if you've got a spinning disk, it's going to take a while for that when you want to use it again to be able to come out of the disk and back into RAM. So if you've got an SSD, a solid state device, and you use that as your disk cache, you'll find it will operate a lot quicker than a spinning disk. Mine happens to be a spinning disk. And what you want to make sure is that you have enabled your disk cache. And also notice that you have the opportunity here to empty a disk cache. So if you've finished a project and you're not going to work on it anymore, then you can get rid of what is inside your disk cache just by empty disk cache. And if you have to load the project again, yes, you're going to have to cache it all again, and it'll take a little bit of time. But if you finish with the project, you don't really want to leave the disk cache full. You probably empty it out when you've finished a project. Anyway, mine is set up, and I can click OK. And I've got a couple of options. I could RAM preview it, and that's going to stick it into the disk cache for me as well, and remember the state that it was saved, because actually it saves multiple states. But the other way of doing it is to actually render it in the background. So what you can do, if you actually go to your composition menu here, you'll see that one of them says cache work area in background. Notice it is a work area, by the way. So if I bring this down to, say, two seconds, I'm just going to click two point in here, and that two seconds is the end to end my work area. So my original comp here was four seconds, and now it's only two seconds. I could go to cache work area in background. Notice the keyboard shortcut is control return, that would be command return on a Mac. But if I click that, it's going to actually start to go through and work out what's going on with this particular composition. And after a while I'm going to start having some feedback up here. And there you can see it's starting to render it. However, while that's rendering away and blue bar telling me it's doing it, I can still go to this one and I can try and line up my markers a little bit better. So my text bounces, or let's say I wanted all my text to bounce together in one. So I can work on this project together. And I can still do things in this composition while the other one is rendering in the background and putting that information to disk. So there you go, we've got whole text bouncing in one go. And you'll see that while I'm working on this one, I've still got information over here It's saying background cache comp BG, it's rendered frame 40 of 51. So I've still got feedback here whilst I'm working on this composition of what's actually going on. Now if I go back into this one, you'll see that we've got this blue bar saying that it is stuck to the disk cache. Green means it's in my RAM, which means it's going to play back instantly. Blue means that it's put that information onto the disk cache, ready to reload into RAM when I want to actually play it back. So if I go to the beginning, and this time I'm actually just going to hit my space bar, what's going to happen is all that information is going to be loaded back into RAM and then be able to play back a lot quicker because it's taking the information directly from the disk as opposed to having to re-render everything all the time. And therefore it's playing through really smoothly and looking really great. Whereas if I was to just pull this out a little bit more and I was to hit the space bar, you'll see that it'll get to the end and then it's going to take forever to 
go through each individual frame and load those into RAM and into disk, interestingly enough. Now, say I make a change. This middle layer is the one with all the work. So if I was to take this middle layer and pull it along and uh, try and make some changes to this particular item, wherever this item has been rendered, notice it's remembering it and saying, well, this bit's already been rendered, I can just pull it along. And if I was to then go back to its original position, you'll see that it remembers it and moves it along. So if you make changes, it's actually going to remember what you've done. If I was to add an effect to this, for instance, if I say stick a blur on or something, so let's go to effects, blur and sharpen, and just stick on a box blur for argument's sake, and let's just take the box blur up a little bit, you'll notice that the, the RAM cache is gone. But if I were to turn off the box blur, you'll see that it instantly comes back again. So it's remembered what's gone on. But the beauty about this is that it'll also remember it even if the whole project is shut down. So if I was to shut down this project, because I have enabled disk cache, if I was to then reopen the project, you'd find that the whole thing would come in with a blue bar where it had been disk cached before. And then all it needs to do is take what's in the disk, stick it in RAM, and we're off and up and running, which saves the need for pre-rendering. So if I go back to my project, and I was to take the BG in here and just drop the BG at the bottom, hit the space bar to load it in, you'll see how quickly that's loading in until it gets to the end of two seconds, roughly, where we finished. And now all of a sudden it's going slow because that background layer has got to re-render entirely from this point. Okay, so those are options that will save you having to do a pre-render. So if you've done a render of some sort, either by hitting the space bar or by using the RAM preview, I've not used the RAM preview because if you look, I've set my RAM preview up to skip a frame, whereas if you hit the space bar, it actually plays back every frame full resolution. So that's the reason why I was using my space bar, just to show how slow it could be, but even how powerful it is once you've got the global performance cache operating with that persistent disk cache. So do you need to pre-render? No. If you've done some kind of render, be it a RAM preview or whatever you might have done, you'll actually discover that when you've finished, the whole thing's going to be there, ready to use, and After Effects is going to remember it, so that even if you shut down the project and you don't even need to save it, and yet you open it up again, it's going to remember it here, and I hadn't actually needed to make any major changes. Now, if I had multiple layers here with lots of effects, the other thing is, if I make changes to one layer, it's still not going to be a slow operation because it will remember what has happened on previous layers. So, for instance, I've got this little vignette layer at the top. If I was to add something completely different and quite computationally intensive onto that layer, the only thing that would need to render would actually be that layer because it would remember what it's already done to the other layers that have gone on below it. So, if you've got CS6, you're actually going to discover that your projects are going to operate a lot quicker you don't need to use pre-render anything like as much as you would do in previous versions where RAM previews or RAM caches are not kept. They are lost as soon as you make a change. And just to re-emphasize this, if I make a change and I have to re-RAM preview and then I turn around and say, oh heck, you know what, I want to go back to how it originally was and I go back to a previous state, because it has been cached not just to RAM but then save that on disk, it will instantly say, aha, I've been like this before and bring you back to that state and you can load it and play it really quickly. So CS6 is going to save you an awful lot of time and save you the need for pre-rendering, particularly when you're working on complex backgrounds. So I hope you found this useful. It's yet another reason why it's worth moving to CS6 because this one feature alone has actually made the workflow significantly faster. My name's Andrew Davis, and thanks for watching.